Uh, we're very excited today to welcome our partners at Sentinel One. Um, so we've got Chris Goodman from Sentinel One, and today we're going to be showing off the integration that they actually built uh, for the Sentinel platform. And we've got a pretty cool playbook that we're going to run through and show you guys. Um, and the playbook is going to actually show you can, how you can use Phantom and Sentinel One together to automate the response to a ransomware infestation. We're going to try and actually execute that live today and show you guys what that looks like. So some pretty exciting stuff. Um, before we launch, I'll just kind of give a few quick updates. Um, for anyone that might be new to Phantom, thank you very much for joining us today and welcome. Uh, just a, a few quick updates about Phantom itself for those that might be new to our, our community. One, Phantom is very much a community driven uh, ecosystem. So if you're interested in anything you see today, uh, you want to go try it out, you can go freely download our community edition of Phantom and actually go play around and check this stuff out yourself. Um, we are going to be building out a playbook today. So playbook's kind of a, like a, an operations plan automated through Phantom. And you can also build those and contribute those to our community. Uh, it's pretty active and we see a lot of sharing of these playbooks amongst our community members. And the one we uh, walk through today, we're actually going to be publishing out and making it available in case you want to go check it out yourselves. So here's the uh, playbook that we've created, and we're going to release this to the community. Um, and actually, we're going to improve on it, as we'll show at the end, before we release it to the community. Uh, but starting from the beginning, uh, we have what's called Sentinel-1 get threat information. And so in, the, in that action, we're pulling uh, the raw data report that Chris was showing earlier. So that's every file modification, IP address connection, um, and there are several other types of events that are that are pulled there. So for a pretty simple malware execution, you can easily get into three, four, five thousand events there. Um, so you get a, a very rich set of information about the malware, and what it did as it executed in this particular environment. Then we're we're doing that as quickly as possible so we can get a snapshot of what's happening you know right away so and that's kind of one of the beauties of automation is you don't have to wait for an analyst to come in and maybe run that after the fact um, we're doing that right away and then we're actually calling mitigate threat and like we said we have the four options of uh, kill quarantine remediate rollback and we went all the way with rollback which is the most extreme one um, and then so we're, we're allowing sentinel one to do that and then we're doing kind of a post-mortem listing the processes, getting a file reputation uh, from VirusTotal on the actual malware that was executed. We're going to resolve the IP uh, using a simple DNS query. We're going to run that against Alexa to make sure it's not, um, that IP doesn't resolve to kind of a top, top million domain, meaning, you know, it's not a common website that people need to use for their day-to-day -day work. And if it's not, we're actually going to go into Palo Alto Networks and we're going to block that IP which in this case would be the command and control server for the malware. Uh, and then finally, we're going to block the hash of the malware that was used across all of our endpoints by adding it to a blacklist in Sentinel-1. And we're going to quarantine that device from the network until the analyst can dig into it further. So, so that's the playbook that's going to run through, and I can actually switch over to a live demo. Uh, so here we have a VM where we drop the malware on the desktop. And you see that they have some documents yeah. in here. You can go ahead, Chris. Hey, Phil, so let me just uh, pivot off of what you were saying there. Thank you so much. This is phenomenal. Uh, so just uh, the first question that's always asked is, well, hey, Sentinel-1, if your stuff is so amazing, why is there max sub ransomware on your desktop? I uh, shouldn't have been able to catch that. And so the, the key thing there is to know, guys, is that uh, this is just a dropper. All it is, if you pop this open, is that it's just a call to a C2 server to download the payload and also the encryption key. So that's the, the key differentiator there is that it's just a dropper and we see this all the time uh, in the, the malware community. And that's one of the things that get by, you know, a lot of the signature based kind of stuff as you see. Cool, thanks Chris. And one more comment from me. Speaking of questions, if you guys have any questions at any point, we've got a Q&A panel in WebEx. So if you just type them in there, we'll, we'll try and respond to them as quickly as possible. Yeah, okay, so we can go ahead and, uh, and detonate this. And uh, like Chris said, that's that's just the dropper, so it's going to reach out. But it is tagged as suspicious right away. So if we're in our console, we'll see um, that 
pretty quickly you get so, so these 15 mitigated ones are prior executions of this. This one suspicious one is is going to be the one that has not been fully convicted yet. So Chris, did you want to give more of a background of the flow uh, into suspicious and then active? Yeah, absolutely. So what happened here is that engine just kicked off and said, hey, this is really suspicious uh, and we should take a look at it. And so the thing about that is then in 90 seconds, there'll be a conviction afterwards saying, hey, this is definitely something wrong uh, and that we need to stop it right away. So again, just to mention guys, this is in EDR only mode. This is uh, just uh, sometimes how it happens within our environments that we're just gonna let this run in EDR and look for things afterwards. And so here we are looking for afterwards and you can see uh, very shortly that this is gonna be then sent uh, a malicious event. And then once that happens with the integration with Phantom, Splunk and Palo Alto, all the toys that a lot of you guys have, this is automatically going to be taken care of for you. So here it is, it's mentioned as active threat now, and it's going to be kicked off into Splunk saying, hey, this is an active threat and you need to take a look at it. I just wanna step back for a second here guys and say, how hard would it be if uh, you had all these toys, you had a firewall, right? A Palo Alto firewall, a Splunk, and also uh, our stuff and uh, without FAM. It'd be almost impossible. That's typically three different teams that have to look at three different sets of data to do this. And so how awesome is it is that you have something like Phantom to then join it together and that you don't have to do anything other than say, huh, well, that guy got hit by some ransomware and we took care of it already. And so it's a very powerful stuff. Bill? Right, so as we can see, See the malware is progressing. It's actually uh, encrypted those files ahead in documents, and it's telling us we need to send some money to uh, some Bitcoin address. Um, but we're going to yeah. I would love for you guys to look at that Bitcoin address because I really need some money. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And so, so now we'll see that uh, Sentinel One has also built an app here within uh, Splunk, and so we're actually leveraging that. Um, so. Splunk is going to be pulling the uh, Sentinel-1 threat data. Um, and so you can see that, that there's one detected threat in the last 15 minutes, so that's already updated there. And we're doing a similar search, um, using a correlation search within Splunk, which uh, uses a Splunk adaptive response action to send over to Phantom. So uh, this should create um, what, what's called a Splunk notable event, um, which is kind of their concept of an alert. And so you can see that this was created here in 932, pretty shortly after the execution of that malware. Uh, and within a Splunk notable event, you get the, the adaptive response action. Uh, it's gonna say send to Phantom. So that's the one we're using there. And, and uh, so within Phantom, the analyst, that was, this is from a previous event, but the analyst is typically gonna be here in the, this, is what we call the analyst queue. So you have a list of all the events and you can see I've run this particular one uh, several times. But one minute ago, we created uh, uh, another Sentinel-1 event, and we should already have uh, started our playbook here. So you can see uh, we, we pulled the threat information out for this threat ID that was passed over. So an, an analyst querying deeper into this would, would need to be kind of copying and pasting around things like a threat ID or an IOC, um, but Phantom is, is just passing that from component to component. And you can see we did that preliminary list processes that I mentioned giving us a snapshot of what's going on. So, okay, so essentially this playbook should be running through. I was saying uh, if you didn't want to allow the threat to progress, which we're doing here kind of for demo purposes, uh, I would just remove this delay timer, which is basically just giving some time before we actually go ahead and, and do the rollback action in Sentinel-1. Um, so here we can see that we actually went through and we mitigated the threat and we got back a success status. So let's just check on that in Sentinel-1 just to show. So this is the one that I just uh, executed six minutes ago. And you can see we moved this, uh, with, it, with one action, we moved all through all four stages because ro a rollback kind of encompasses all the other ones and it adds that additional functionality. Uh, um, so we've now uh, rolled back on the host and I believe I quarantined the device, so I lost my uh, remote connection to it there. But I can show here in, uh, let's see, I have network here. I can show the status of this is disabled, meaning Phantom called an action called quarantine device 
on that endpoint. Um, so you can see we ran that there and we got a success status back. Yeah. And then and just to interject like, ourselves. You know, Sorry. demo gods had a, had a little issue here. We we didn't quite get the block hash through. Um, might be something I need to look into in the playbook itself. Uh, I had that working earlier, but we did go ahead and look up the URL and trace that back to a block IP on the two IP addresses that Chris had chosen to use as the command and control servers. So you can see we sent that over to a we we, we created an object in the Palo Alto Networks firewall for for each of these IP addresses. We added it to our our group of addresses that we're blocking, uh, and then we committed the change to the the firewall itself. And we gave a little description here of what exactly we were doing. Um, we blocked these IPs because the one of them doesn't even have an Alexa rank uh, for its domain name, which is fairly suspicious. If it's any kind of legitimate website, it probably will. And then the second one is in the four millions, so it's an incredibly obscure uh, site that was used there. So again, that's pretty suspicious. Add that to the fact that Sentinel-1 detected it as C2 for malware, and that's enough for us to block it at this point. So that's the, that's the the way the playbook currently looks. But uh, of course, in your environment, you're going to have some different processes that you use. So for instance, um, after you quarantine the device, you might want to consider uh, tasking an analyst to unquarantine it. So basically say, um, I'll select, uh, we'll say, Ehrlich Bachman, please take a look. Um, and do you think he would actually look at yes, it though? if we should unquarantine the device? And so I'll give the options yes, no. And I'll, as a follow on, I'll filter, basically saying, okay, so if the answer to that, if the answer to that response message equals yes, then we're just going to go ahead and call a similar action here. Um, instead of quarantine, we're going to call unquarantine device. So, and again, you might have to, you might involve multiple people. We can we can use groups of of people, uh, of groups of phantom users in that task as well. And we can also let me first let me get this set up here. So we get thread info, and then we'll have something called a computer name. Um, will be in there. So it's under agent details, computer name that was returned to us from Sentinel-1. Uh, so at that point, the, the analyst is actually going to get a notification in Phantom. And you can have that send emails or, or create ServiceNow tickets as well. Um, but basically, they're going to be pulled in at this point now that all the actions that we feel we needed to take immediately have been taken through automation. Um, now you can pull someone in to take a look at the evidence. They're, they're in mission control. They have the, action, they have the ability to actually do follow-on actions of a similar sort. So for instance, under the Sentinel-1 category, um, you, you, know, you, can, you can run any one of these actions. You can do a full system scan at that point. Um, and all that evidence is collected here in Mission Control, as well as the ability to chat. For instance, I can uh, call out the incident responder that I was mentioning. Um, uh, please provide further details. So we have some you know, collaboration features in there as well. All right, yeah. Um, Maybe so. I'll briefly show. So, so the playbook itself, uh, we're going to release that to the community. So you can see it on my.phantom, but these are all on GitHub as well. So there's 45 of them here. So this will be probably the 46th one that we release. OK, great. Yeah, so thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, if you haven't checked out Phantom yet, go pull down our community edition and give it a try. If you have, uh, we'll be publishing the Sentinel playbook shortly. So you can go check out what we built today and try it out for yourself. Uh, but thank you so much, everyone, for attending, and uh, we'll see you next time.